Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. How are you doing today? Kyle here with another video. And today what I wanted to do is I just wanted to show you guys some of the newest additions to my book collection. As some of you guys know, I am a collector of textbooks of all kinds. I like physics, I like astronomy, I like, yeah, physics and astronomy. I guess math too, sometimes. But mainly physics and astronomy. Huh, I wonder why. I got some of these books as a gift during the holiday season, but some of them I decided to pick up because I'm a pretty simple guy. I go on Amazon, I see, hey, that looks like an interesting book, and I'll go get the book. Sue me, right? Um, well, maybe my apartment and my office will, because I'm running out of space. But that's besides the point. The point is to show you guys the new books I've added to my collection, and tell you guys why I think they're great, and what makes them kind of unique. So let's just get started, shall we? So the first book that I'm going to show you guys is A Student's Guide to the Schrodinger Equation by Daniel Fleisch. Uh, for those of you who don't know, A Student's Guide is like a series of books that Professor Fleisch has written. He's written one on Maxwell's equations, on vectors and tensors, one on the mathematics of astronomy, which I'm looking at up there. But the one thing I really love about these books is that they really boil down the subject into sort of the essence of what you're going to learn. Like for this one, for example, the Schrodinger equation, of course, is like the central thing you learn when you are taking your first undergraduate quantum class. And this book, as with all the Students' Guides books, I just love how descriptive and conceptually minded it is. Like it really gives you a really great foundation in the subject, in the sense that if I'm looking at the contents here, the, the book is organized in the sense that the first like chapter is like on linear algebra and vectors, which is the sort of the cornerstone of understanding quantum mechanics. And then it introduces you to the, the Dirac, Bra, and Ket notation, which you use all the time in quantum mechanics classes. So if you're first learning quantum mechanics, I would highly, highly, highly recommend picking up this book. I mean, I wish I had this book when I first studied quantum mechanics. So the one thing I really like that these books do is that they'll often take the equation, like the central equation or equations, and then they'll just break it down into what all of its pieces are and explain, you know, what exactly it all means. Next page has like a description of like what all those terms mean in the equation. I don't know how well you can see that, but it literally is going through each term in that equation, in the Schrodinger equation, and explaining to you in words what it all means. So honestly, if you're studying quantum mechanics, Yes, pick this up, please, especially if it's your first time. I, as someone who has taken, I don't know, five, six quantum mechanics classes, think that this is a great book to first learn quantum mechanics. And it was a great refresher, too, for me. Now, moving on. Um, these next two books are actually kind of interesting. I bought them as a pair because I thought to myself, okay, what is my research based on? Well, it's based on radio observations, radio astronomy observations from the Atacama Large Millimeter Array. And then I thought to myself, I don't have any textbooks on radio astronomy. Let me fix that. So what I did was I bought these two books. I bought uh, Radio Astronomy by John D. Krauss, and I bought Millimeter Astronomy, which is from T.L. Wilson and Stephanie Giotto. I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce I cannot pronounce that, I'm sorry. But yes, these are the two books that uh, I bought for radio astronomy purposes. Now, radio astronomy, as you can see here, is this nice spiral bound book. It's very unique. It's like the only textbook that I have that's like spiral bound. And it's from uh, around 1985, I think. This is the second edition. The first edition came around in the 60s, so it's a bit old, but it has been reported to be like the Bible of radio astronomy. And one of the nice things that I really, really love about this book is that you have, let me go to the back here. Let me, let me find it here. Okay, so for all the problems in the book, there are legit handwritten solutions on how to do the problems. I mean, come on, man. Like how many textbooks actually give you handwritten solutions in the back? like to help you really learn the subject. I mean, this is just, this is just amazing. Like, I, I cannot believe a book like this existed. Now, I'm gonna be honest, the spiral bound thing is kind of annoying at times because it's kind of hard to flip around and stuff, but the hardcover edition I saw on Amazon was like in the $900 range or something crazy like that. So there was no way I was gonna <laughs> pitch in 900 bucks uh, when this came at a cost of like probably under 50, I think, or 60. So 
Yeah, definitely, definitely a great book if you want to learn radio astronomy. I have been actually pouring into it quite a bit. One thing I will say is that the units are in CGS, which I think is, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it was standard for the time, even though that nowadays we sort of use SI for, for science. But, um, you know, if you can get beyond the CGS units and, you know, do your conversion factors properly, then, yeah, pick it up. It's a really great book. I really like it learning about radio astronomy and the history of it. I mean, it's a really good book for actually like the technical stuff, but also like learning a little bit about the history of when things were developed and who developed it and, and so and so. So yeah, great, love it, don't wanna ruin it. So I'm gonna put it down gently over here. Next up, we have Millimeter Astronomy by T.L. Wilson and Stephanie Giotto. Giotto. You can see here, you have, um, you have the Atacama Large Millimeter Array as the front cover, which is very attractive to me because that's the that's the observatory that takes my data. So, really awesome book, and it is a really a sort of like a reference book in a sense. It's a very very brief introduction into the workings of millimeter astronomy. So it goes into the different um, aspects of like radio antennas, uh, goes into like receivers and sort of how you would plan out observations and stuff like that. It's very, very oriented for the observer who who's trying to plan out some sort of observation with the Atacama Large Millimeter Array and give you some grounding in the subject beforehand. And then it also goes ahead and applies it to things that um, are of great interest today. As you can see here, it has uh, an image of uh, an inclined Keplerian disk, which is used to often study protoplanetary disk formation and structure. And this is actually kind of interesting because I, I do the same sort of modeling for molecular gas disks to measure black hole masses with ALMA. So it's interesting because it's it's same sort of physics, but applied in a completely different context to study a completely different system. But that's the beauty of physics, you know, you apply it to different things and it still works. Who would have known? So yeah, really, really nice book. The, the nice thing about this is that this book, I think on Amazon was like around two hundred dollars or something 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 that I was not willing to buy but then for some reason it went down to like 12 during the holiday season so I was I was like oh I gotta get that <laughs> that's how you get me Amazon all right just drop your books from like 200 to 10 and I'll buy like two hundred dollars worth of ten dollar books I mean it's simple math okay so really really fun addition uh, next up ooh, this is a good one we got problem book in relativity and Gravitation by Alan Lightman and W.H. Press, Richard Price, and Saul Tikulski. This is like the book that many people in general relativity who have become professionals in general relativity, like all of these guys, for example. For those of you who don't know the names of these people, uh, all of these guys were advised in their PhDs by a guy named Kip Thorne. You may have heard of him, like 2007, 2017, sorry, Nobel Prize winner. So, uh, yeah, kind of a big deal. All of his students came together and were like, you know what, let's band together, let's make a problem book for the next gen of general relativists, and exactly what they did. So it's just a problem book full of problems and their solutions. So each chapter sort of just has like, um, it just kind of has problems that they, you know, lay out for you guys, maybe some hints along the way, but then the other section of the book, it's divided into two halves. So the first half is all questions, the second half is all solutions. Okay, so these are all, this is a solution section to some of the problems. So really awesome pickup. It was under, I think, $50 on Amazon. And for those of you who don't know, I'm actually trying to self-teach myself general relativity right now. So this is an absolutely great resource for anyone who wants to really try and understand Einstein's theory at its, at its core and get some practice with the machinery of general relativity. So yeah, highly re recommend pick it up if you are so interested. And with that, I'm gonna move on to the second to last book. And it is Statistics, Data Mining, and Machine Learning in Astronomy. So this book is, as it says here, a practical Python guide for the analysis of survey data. So again, as some of you guys know, I do observational astronomy in Python, and I am moving towards areas of my research that's going to use a lot of statistics, and not necessarily machine learning, but perhaps maybe some data mining as well. And I thought, you know, I need a good reference book on this. Like I don't have anything related to 
you know, actual programming and applying some of these concepts to my own research. So this book is really nice because it goes through, for example, the basics of statistics. So let me just go through the sections here. So it goes through statistical frameworks and exploratory data analysis. So we're talking about basic probability and statistics going through di different kinds of distributions like the central limit theorem, talking about Gaussian distributions, Poisson distributions. Next part of the book goes into frequentist versus Bayesian statistical analyses and the different kinds of tools that both kinds of you know, statisticians will will use. That's very interesting to me because I'm trying to implement a Bayesian framework into my into my research. So definitely useful for that. And then it goes into, let's see here, data mining and machine learning, uh, and then goes through a bunch of different examples and how to apply it in Python. Now, this is not really like a textbook in the sense that there are problems for you to solve, but it's a nice reference book in the sense that it gives you, you know, places where you can find code uh, online on like GitHub or something, and then apply them to your research, uh, and then you know give you examples on how to apply it to other kinds of data sets. And look at these nice pictures. Like these are like the only colored pictures in the books, but they're 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 applications of some of the tools in this book, and they're printed on this nice glossy paper here. I think this is going to be probably one of the most useful books towards the end of my PhD when I start really going into the Bayesian side of of my my research. So. It would also be very useful when it comes to me um, maybe wanting to implement machine learning one day to my methods. I mean, I don't know. Machine learning is just, you know, all around us nowadays. Like, it's, I don't know why I pointed the book at you guys when I said that, but, you know, it, it's all around us nowadays. And not just in, like, physics and astronomy, but, you know, economics and biology and finance. And it's just, it's going to be a big thing. You know, it's the, it's the way of the future. So perhaps it's good that I know it somewhat. All right, these last two I got were actually gifts that were given to me from both my friends and my family. So the first one that I want to go into is the, the one given to me by my friends. Now, just a little bit of background here. My friends are originally from Russia, and they wanted to give me a gift that combined aspects of their culture, but something that's sort of connected to me as well. And so what they got me was this Soviet space graphics Cosmic Visions from the USSR, which is a book of just a bunch of nice, cool graphics that uh, was uh, that were you know published in the USSR during the you know space race between uh, the USA and the Soviet Union, and it's just really cool to see these nice, pretty graphics. Honestly, I mean, I can't read the the, the Russian, but the the graphics are just absolutely beautiful here. Like, I really, really enjoy just like looking at some of these images and it's an interesting you know perspective to have right because you know obviously i'm from america and so you know most of the space race i learned was from the american side and i think it's just cool to to just see you know what the other side was doing at the time what they were developing and you know some of these things are just beautifully illustrated it's, it's very very interesting to see um these graphics from the cold war republished in this in this book, um, I'm not here. I'm not here to get political. You know, I'm. I think space is for everyone. You know, space does not belong to one person or one you know group of people or another group of people. It's for everyone to to enjoy. Um, but I, like I said, this is just a really really nice gift, and I, it's a very thoughtful gift for my friends, and I really enjoy. It. I mean, look at this beautiful picture of like Saturn right there. It's like really nice. So I just wanted to say thank you to Dina and Asia for giving me this book. It was a very very thoughtful gift. And I really like looking at these really nicely and beautifully drawn illustrations in here. So thank you very much. So the last book that I have to show you guys was given to me by my family. And it's not even really one book. It's actually a series of books. And it's a very, very famous series of books nonetheless. It is, without further ado, the Feynman Lectures on Physics. These were a series of books that were created from the lectures that Richard Feynman gave during his time as a Caltech professor. So I'm just going to pull out the second one here as an example. Um, and they are essentially, you know, upgraded transcriptions and um, descriptions of his lecture notes. And some of them, like, for example, I'm reading one chapter here. It was like the principle of least action. Uh, apparently it was just almost verbatim, this, this section, but from what he actually taught. And so 
I like reading these books because Feynman, for all of his faults, and I'm not saying he's a perfect individual, but for all of his faults, he is a very, very good explainer of physics. And I find reading his book just helping me remember why I fell in love with physics in the first place. He always, always wants you to come away with understanding, you know, why is this important? How does it actually work? You know, look beyond just the equations. Think about what's physically happening in the in the scenario he's describing. And it's something that I feel like I've almost forgotten. It's kind of sad to say that because I'm a PhD student in physics, but I feel like when you take physics for a major and, you know, pursue a PhD in it, it's it gets very complicated, obviously, and you sometimes forget, you know, what is it all for? What does it all mean? You know, why, why is this all important? Because there are a lot of equations and there's a lot of confusion and sometimes not that great professors that don't explain things very clearly to you guys. But, you know, it's a book like this or books like these, I should say, that really helps you appreciate the, the history and the, um, the beauty of physics because physics really is beautiful and I think Feynman does a good job of showing that beauty out to the world and so I'm very thankful for my family for giving me these books these are very, they're very expensive so I'm really glad that they um, I'm very grateful that they gave them to me and I just I've just enjoyed just reading them I just really enjoyed reading sitting down at night and reading about like you know things that were confusing to me like thermodynamics for example and reading them and imagining Feynman explaining them to me. And I have to say, you know, he really boils it down to you. Um, and uh, I think I've just come away with more of an appreciation of where I am and, you know, appreciating the, the history of the subject and, uh, and the great people who have developed, you know, all these theories and these ideas over, you know, 300, 400 years. So that is it for the video. Um, hope you guys enjoyed watching. It was really fun to just go over these books and, and talk about them. Leave a comment below talking about any books that you've recently added to your collection that you're particularly proud of or happy about having. And I'd love to know what it is and think about possibly adding it to my collection. So thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take it easy, everyone.